Stay on the bike I've ever had. Where do we begin? It's known as the Tour de France of mountain biking for various reasons. It's brutally tough. It's eight days of flat out racing. It starts with a short little prologue, which is usually kind of a, you know, it's a good kickoff, and then seven days, which roughly averages out to kind of 100 k's a day, which makes for 650, 700 kilometers worth of racing over the eight days, and usually at least 16,000 meters of climbing. Ultimately, what makes it so tough is the untamed African terrain. It's absolutely brutal. That mud could crack you inside open lake. You would think, why am I racing? Why am I here? As with the Tour de France, the most coveted jersey is obviously the yellow jersey. That is the overall leader's jersey. As with the Grand Tour, there's categories within categories and a race within a race. And in particular here, we have the Absolute African Red jersey, which is a coveted jersey to be worn, and uh, riders are really proud to put that on. And then we also have the Green Xara jersey, which is really special. It attracts the best riders from around the world. Ex-Olympians, cross-country world champions, marathon world champions, you know, even Grand Tour riders come here. We have one this year riding in the top ten. Ex-multiple tour stage winner, he's ridden all three Grand the Tours. Shark, it is the pinnacle of the epic series, it is the pinnacle of mountain biking. For the pro teams, it's the one race across all the years that they won to win and a win could literally change a rider's life. We are uh, on stage four now. Our well, stage four is finished, but um, yeah, leading up, we had quite a good prologue. Quite happy with our result. Um, stage one, I struggled a lot. We lost quite a lot of time on all the riders. Coming into Epic was to get a top five and the African jersey. And then after the first stage, it didn't look good at all. I think for me, it was like just grabbing Cokes at every water point and then also letting him ride his pace not getting into his head too much to let him know, like, we must go faster. Like, cause he knows that we are going too slow. So it's just about managing the day and try limit time. Right, historically you guys have always ridden well in the form. Is it still the plan? Yeah, it is still the plan. Just need to stick to the plan. <laughs> So on paper, this year's route, some people would have said it's slightly easier, but you know, with the weather we've had, it's been absolutely brutal, and nowhere has it been more telling than in the front. They hate when you elevate. They're stacking up losses, I'm handing them out, yeah, I had to go delegate. They feel like I'm floating, I'm lost in the moment, I swear I could levitate. They never believed that I would really fly, I had to go demonstrate. I had to set them straight. They hate when you elevate. The racing has been fierce from the gun every single day. Um, the first 40 k's of each race is almost like a cross-country race. You know, the guys are putting down the hammer and the amount of watts those guys are laying down is frightening to see. It's been a real ding-dong battle and it's all to play for. The Xara jersey was first introduced to act as a catalyst to introduce more riders from historically disadvantaged communities to mountain biking, to the sport and to events like the Absa Cape Epic. 
and it also has uh, a reward at the end of the day. You know, they get bursaries, etc. And those are, those things are very important. Education, I mean, you can give me money and it'll probably, I can use it within a year. But once you give me education, you know, that, that lasts a, a lifetime. Are we looking forward to it? All the boys are excited. This year, actually, we look more healthier. Yay! <laughs> and we've got a new lady that we're hoping that they're going to win the Exaro jersey. This year, for the first time, we have a women's category. The prize is exactly the same as the men's, which is typically a, um, a chance to further their tertiary education. To the wonderful Exaro girls, that's going to absolutely fly. Best of luck. We're going to cheer you on, root for you. Go well, be safe. The Exaro women's category this year has been dominated by Rafilwe and Umfile. They've been riding super strong each stage, dominating riding within themselves, but pushing the pace to stay ahead of their competitors, uh, riding really well technically as well. It's been impressive to watch. When we got the chance to, to see that we're actually leading for amateur, we decided that, okay, we rather than just shift our focus to, towards the amateur jersey, because the Exaro jersey, uh, initially we got it anyway. I guess it's a it's a huge it's a huge deal because that means I've improved as a rider and that means I'm going somewhere as a rider. The support that we get from the women, uh, the she and ten ladies, the ladies from other teams, it's really great. Yeah, it's a lot I can learn because I mean I'm obviously trying to be one of the pioneering women in motorsports and this is, is, is a really good example of where we can get to. And this is what, what I dream for, for for us and women. It's just incredible. Um, and the girls and how strong they are and just how far mountain bikings come. It's, I'm, I'm in awe of everything all day, so. Whether you're at the front of the race or at the back, you have to cover the exact same route. The real heroes, though, are the guys right at the back. Those guys spend 9, 10, 11 hours out there. They have the worst of the conditions. The trails are rutted out. It's brutal. Well, life has nearly killed me and my mind has put me on the edge. Life has nearly killed me and my mind has put me on the edge. So there's a team of us, myself and Matt, and um, our job is to be behind the last rider in the race with the eyes and the ears of the Cape Epic organization, telling them just where the last rider is, feeding any, any medical information through to them, and doing a lot of, um, a lot of talking and chatting and motivating to the riders to, to try to get them through the stages. Does it make the race even more special, riding with your father? Yes. Yes. I uh, wouldn't do it with anyone else. So he's the whole reason I'm mountain bike riding, so yeah. We caught up with that, that Australian dad and daughter pair and I, we had such high hopes we were going to make it. It was going to be this really cool story, but it was heartbreaking to see them. The dad was just cramping in the last 5Ks. And you know, the epic, it's often, this is the reality. There's often not a fairy tale finish. And so that's the, that's the end of their race. So if a rider misses the total allocated stage time, their board gets clipped off by the commissaires. It's brutal to watch, but unfortunately a reality of this event and a reason why riders train to ride 600 kilometers and 16,000 meters of climbing. If a rider misses that full allocated stage time, they get a blue number for the following stage and are allowed to continue. If they make it to Val de Vie and make every stage as full stage time, they won't get a finishers medal however. Should they miss another stage as full allocated stage time, they are unfortunately not allowed to continue. Yeah, I wanted, wanted to do it with, with Dad. Um, he pulled out stage three. Um, yeah, he told me just to keep going. But yeah, it's, it's hard, sort of. Because yeah, I, I want to finish with Dad, but yeah. Yeah, oh yes, the high enders were great. I mean, on the second on the second day when we were getting close to cut-off time, you know, where I was feeling really sick, um, but they they were great and they pushed us through. I'm so proud of it. I mean, everybody has said it's so great to be riding with your daughter. 
she'll finish. She'll she'll get through today. She'll get through today. And she'll she's determined girl. <laughs> Turn the gill. Take my hat off for them. Like they ride the whole day, come in, like still in their shammies, basically walk to dinner. Then we already had massage, lunch, shower, and yeah, they do it six, seven days in a row, and uh, yeah, I don't know how they do it, it's incredible. Yeah, kudos to the, the guys chasing the cut of times. literally a river down there like you can't see yeah. all my weight in the front one and then I hit a rock or something I was like whoa whoa <laughs> OTB <laughs> trying to stand up but I can't I'm just sitting there yeah so I just saw Mark who had a bad crash and yeah he was just laying there out of breath and how for the oh, epic basically over. But yeah, somehow after 20 k's of spinning, his legs came back to him and yeah, he was a, a solid solid survivor out there today. And yeah, I think we're still still on the African podium, so we will keep chasing. The team of Mbuko Type Dev really showed what they were made of early on, racing really well. Peter de Twin and Marco Hubert had a stage win last year. They rode really well in the prologue in some of the earlier stages. Unfortunately, on the Queen stage, stage five, they suffered a mechanical and there was a couple of crashes. And after that, their rhythm was lost. And unfortunately, those things become compounded and they've lost too much time to be in the hunt for the red jersey anymore. So for some teams, the racing has not quite gone according to plan. And for others, it's gone way better than expected. But there's so many different perspectives, with riders from all over the world, all with different hopes, dreams and ambitions. Some are here to win it. Others are just looking to ride to the finish in Val de Vie.